let me tell you my story. So I was a complete degenerate loser for I'd say 25 years of my entire life. I mean, obviously when you're a baby, you know, you can't really call yourself a loser, but more or less I had no accomplishments to date. When I was young, especially in my late teenage years, there was a certain void in my life. Meaning, I came from a well-to-do household. You know, everything looked great on the outside, but there were some issues internally, and a lot of these issues had been rubbed off on me. I went to a school, which was a public school, normal school, and it had everyone from every single different walk of life. You had people from the projects to kids of hockey players. It was a school where you could choose to do anything you wanted to. My peer group, unfortunately, who I was so destined to fit in with, I would even sell my life to fit in with these guys, even though they're a bunch of cucks now, was not a good peer group. They were perceived as, you know, relatively cool, not the coolest kids in the school, but decently cool enough up there in terms of social hierarchy, right? And they did everything under the sun. So as soon as grade 10 hit, it was smoking, drinking, drugs, you know, just a pretty degenerate lifestyle. And now that I'm a lot older, you can see the implications of their actions. So, you know, for example, my three best friends growing up, one guy's in jail, one guy's selling drugs, the other guy's addicted to drugs. So I was headed down a very dark path, inevitably, you know, just from a lot of anger built in at home, uh, being, being just a loser, you know, I had no guidance. Uh, the messages that were thrown at me from my parents and at home were extremely encouraging. They had a good meaning behind the message, but they had an absolutely horrible method of delivering this me message. So what our parents are saying to us, it's not exactly false. The problem is they just have no clue how to convey this message. So my life kept sinking down, sinking down, sinking down. Then I ended up hit, hitting rock bottom in grade 10. Uh, I got arrested in class, so that'll be another story to chronicle on its own. I'm just going to give you a snapshot of what happened. So I got arrested in class, uh, stole my parents' car, crashed it. Uh, yeah, I was found with a lot of drugs, got expelled. And to cap it all off, I looked like shit. I was 30 pounds overweight, fat, acne. McDonald's was eight for two meals, you know, five out of seven days a week. Just a very disgusting and degenerate lifestyle. This all changed, however, when I met my neighbor, who was gonna be referred to this as my bro dad. So he was 13 years older than me and he lived across the street. We ended up meeting because his sister worked for my dad at the time and uh, there was a corporate function and we got seated at the same table. So we just started talking and having a good time. And uh, this guy was super cool, like super chill. He was, you know, he's older, so he had a lot of insight. And we started to hang out more. And he used to tell me these things like, look, man, I know you're not going to resonate with this now, but I want you to read, for example. And I'm thinking, like, I don't read. Who the hell read? What kind of loser reads? And he said, I know you might think it's not cool. Even if you're reading one page a day now, you're 16, 17, it's going to compound. You're going to thank me later. So I thought, you know, this guy's kind of full of shit, you know, at first when you're hearing this stuff and you know, you don't know the significance, you're only thinking what's on your brain to try to be cool. But he was able to deliver these messages to me with such finesse. You know, it was like, he would talk to me, he would listen to me, but he wouldn't judge me, but he would give me the advice with the uh, ambition and the aim of a father giving advice, but he would deliver it like a brother. So I'm not gonna get you in trouble, but I want the best for you, but here's how we're gonna talk. So he eventually convinced me to get my grades up, you know, to uh, stop hanging out with these degenerates. And he would tell me things like, look, man, the definition of cool changes overnight in grade 12 graduation. Uh, the cool factor and the popularity factor shifts from who's doing what high school and then right on graduation day, it shifts to who, where are you going after high school? So are you going to university? Are you going to college? Are you just going to upgrade? That's your popularity. So I would listen to him, you know, I said, this guy is older than me. He has guidance. He uh, obviously has very good intention. And through micro changes, I kept seeing everything that he would tell me actually come true. So whether it was six weeks, six months, six years, 
he would tell me something, like tell me like a theory or you know why you should do something, and it would miraculously come true later. So I started following more of his advice, and fast forward now, I'm almost 30 years old. I'm graduating uh, with a doctor of pharmacy, an MBA in six months. I also hold a, a bachelor's of science degree. So exactly what happened in these last you know 10 to 13 years that allowed me to get to this point where back in the day, this was beyond my wildest dreams. It was my, um, beyond my imagination. But that's what this channel's about. And it captures a very unique viewpoint as I can relate to a lot of the younger people. I have four younger siblings myself, uh, the younger people to, you know, a couple years older than me. And my bro dad right now, he's 43 and he's lived the cycle, right? So he essentially, I'm going to, I'm not going to spoil him for you because I want him to introduce himself. Right. But he went through everything I went through in terms of, even there's a bit of a gap in terms, right? It was like a 10 year gap, but he still saw all the patterns play out. The patterns don't change from generation to generation. Maybe the means might change. So instead of using MSN messenger, you might have an iPhone, but the actions and largely what happens, 80% is the same. So you can apply it. It doesn't matter if, you know, older, older guy or, you know, a newer guy just entering high school, high school politics obviously evolves and group settings evolve, but more or less, not much is going to change. So that's where, you know, I think our advice is really going to help a lot of you guys that can be applied from a guy who's 13 years old to like 55 years old, right? This anyone that's trying to re-engineer their life to make a comeback. Now, I'm very fortunate that he came in the rather formative years of my life. You know, I was uh, still in my adolescent years. So I was able to apply what he told me and I was able to tic-tac-toe. So follow a sequential pattern. Uh, I was lucky, I mean, I didn't have to, I made obviously a lot of mistakes in my life, but it was early enough that I was able to correct recourse without very severe consequences. But any man, doesn't matter what your age is, you can make a comeback. We're going to talk about exactly how with each lesson learned and we learn lessons because we would just talk so you know once a month we would link up cruise for a meal just drive around the city for five hours just talking about lessons social theory we never talked about sports we never talked about you know, drinking partying we never talked about clothes not the newest fact it doesn't it doesn't affect us right i watch a sports game for two hours i'm still the same loser at the end of it right so there's nothing gained so we would talk about stuff that was applicable and we were both really interested in it so that's where the development of this channel came, is that I realized, you know, the role he had in my life in terms of where I am now, and my uh, social, you know, physical, emotional health and stability, I owe a lot of it to him. And he realized the role that he's had with me. And, you know, I've also bounced ideas to him and it's been a two-way streak, right? We help each other and we've realized the positive differences that we've had in each other's lives, right? And you know, we both have families now of our own and we can both you know, successfully navigate them. Obviously there's you know, it's turbulence, what comes with family, whatnot, but we are able to talk and bounce ideas off each other to always make each day more successful. And we wanted to bring that to you guys, you know, share a lot of our lessons is how did this kid go from you know, smoking, drinking alcohol, not even passing grade 10, you know, like, like a 48% average to graduating from a top university in sciences and now graduating with a farm D and MBA, right? It's a lot of things happened in the last decade, but a lot of lessons, right? And it happened in a very organic manner. So a lot of you guys can really relate to what's going on, right? It wasn't just the overnight things. It was micro changes, which took, you know, even one to three years, but they were successfully being able to essentially get implemented in my day-to-day -day and make lasting changes. So it wasn't just an overnight thing. It was, uh, you know, change one, change X, we're going to focus on for two years, change Y for three years, blah, blah, blah. But they were able to be changes that can actually be sustained. So anyone can uh, implement these changes in lifestyles and increase their quality of life to a significant amount. So that's my introduction. And I'm going to let you watch Zaman. Zaman's introduction. He's the you know, the coolest guy I know. And I really hope that you guys can learn something out of our interactions and talks with you and become something of yourself. Peace out.